Hi, and welcome to another Pop Rock Short. Remember, if you like what you see here, please hit the like button and subscribe below. Okay, on to the show. Phil Seymour and Dwight Twilley met in 1967 at a theater in Tulsa where they had both gone to see A Hard Day's Night. We liked the British sound and all that, and we liked uh, the Beatles, and we thought that Elvis was just a guy that was uh, in movies. They started writing and recording songs under the name Oyster and forged a partnership that would leave a lasting mark on power pop music. We're going to go to the first recording studio we could find, you know, and we drove up to this place called Sun. We didn't know what it meant, you know. <laughs> There they met Jerry Phillips, who referred them to producer Ray Harris to further develop their sound, before they moved to L.A. in 1974 and signed with Shelter Records. Shelter had them change their name to the Dwight Twilley Band before their debut single, I'm On Fire, hit the charts in 1975, skyrocketing to the top 20 in the U.S. and showcasing their unique blend of Elvis rockabilly and Beatles pop. But as the single moved up the charts, there was no album release behind it for people to buy until Sincerely was released in 1976. Distribution problems stunted the band's initial prospects, and their follow-up single failed to match their previous success. One day I called up the record company and said, well, how's it doing? And they said, well, uh, the record company's not here anymore. <laughs> so, you know. In a world filled with hard and progressive rock, they played music for Saturday nights, for driving down the highway, riding into the sunset with the top down and the radio on. Along with Bill Pitcock IV, now on guitar, they released their second album, Twilly Don't Mind, in 1977. Despite a loyal and devoted fan base and a trove of power pop treasures, that album failed to take off as well. But what for some would seem like an ending, for these talented musicians, it was only the beginning. With the failure of the Dwight Twilly band to catch fire on the charts, Seymour was the first to venture off on his own and launch a solo career in 1978. While looking for a label, he worked as a session musician, laying down drums for bands like 2020, until catching the ear of Neil Bogart and signing with Board Rock Records. He released his self-titled debut in 1981, an album full of incredible power pop gems, and he seemed destined for superstardom. His infectious energy, magnetic personality, and trademark stripes gave him MTV airplay with the hit Precious To Me and singles like Let Her Dance, proving he was nobody's sideman. His voice, both powerful and tender, left an indelible mark on every track he graced. His follow-up album, Phil Seymour 2, was released in 1982, but the record label collapsed shortly after due to the death of its founder, Neil Bogart, leaving Seymour once again adrift. In 1984, he joined the band The Textones and recorded and toured with them until he was diagnosed with lymphoma. He moved back to Tulsa, where he continued to play live locally till his death in 1993. He was 41 years old. Dwight Twilley always seemed destined for stardom. With his pinup good looks, charismatic stage presence, and heartbreaking vocals, he hit the ground running after folding the Dwight Twilley band. He released his first solo album, Twilly, in 1979, then recorded another album that was ultimately rejected by the record company. He waited till his contract with Shelter expired, then released the album Scuba Divers in 1982. But it was his third album, Jungle, and its MTV-ready singles that found a perfect place for Dwight to continue charming audiences. Hits like Girls, Little Bit of Love, and the gorgeous Why You Wanna Break My Heart brought his unique brand of power pop to a younger generation and cemented his legacy as a clever and masterful songwriter. Twilly released his next album, Wild Dogs, in 1986 on Private Eye Records. On it, The Lovely Shooting Stars was written for his ailing friend, Phil Seymour. Though lasting chart success remained elusive to him, Twilly became both a Tulsa and a power pop legend, continuing to record and perform until his passing in October of 2023. Their paths may have diverged, but the bond between Dwight and Phil remained unbreakable. The Dwight Twilly band with its roller coaster journey is a testament to timeless music and enduring friendship. 
And wherever they may be, I can't help but picture them driving down the highway together some Saturday night, riding into the sunset with the top down and the radio on. This is Bijan from Pop Rocks Radio. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.